Cheers. And welcome to our fireside chat on the Voluntary Virtues Network. My name's Steve. I'm here with Steve and Matt or Mike, however you want to say it, <laughs> and Ehub or John. Ehub? Yes. Ehub. I didn't hear that part. Uh, we're going to be talking about peaceful parenting today, but first, the beer I'm drinking today is Pas- Islander? Is it Islander or Pacific Islander? What's your bottle say? <laughs> Islander, Islander IPA. Islander IPA by... Coronado Brewing Company. Huh. Yes. None of your home brew, huh? No. Not that this is, week. That is fermenting, though, yes. Okay. That shall be coming soon. We do have some morning wood on in the fermenter. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> that's okay. Dude's has some wood. nice... Uh, it. Some nice... Uh, Hop characteristics. Yeah. Okay. Um, trying to think of the word, uh, fruity smell, ah. I guess. Fruity aroma. Yes. Mm. Gotta say aroma instead of smell because it sounds cooler. Right. I sound it's more true. professional that way. Yes, yes. exactly. Right. Uh, kind of an apricot taste to it. Not as bitter as some other IPAs I've had. It's kind of a um, cheesy, apricot Pokey. Cheesy, I don't want in my beer. <laughs> Keep the cheese out of my beer. I'm sorry. <laughs> Although, Wait. if someone brews something with cheese and it's good, more props to you. <laughs> Overall, I think it's a decent IPA. Yeah, I'd say. It's not the hoppiest one I've ever had, but I, I can definitely drink more than a few of them. <laughs> And you probably have already tonight, right? Uh, I think this is just number two. Oh, okay. Of these. <laughs> <laughs> On to the topic. What were we discussing again? Peaceful parenting. Ah, uh, yes. Um, as they say, children are the future. And if we're hoping for a more peaceful, voluntary future, it's got to start with parenting. Do you agree, John? I agree. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, John is our... Resident current parent. Uh, Steve is also a parent. But your your kid is grown, right? Mid-twenties. But, believe me, you never stop being a parent. Right. Like that funky yeah. Steve Martin movie years ago, Parenthood. Yeah, you ever exactly. seen it? So true. Yeah. I mean, not that you boss him around or anything. <laughs> <laughs> At any age. <laughs> Which is kind of what we're talking about tonight. Right. right. Um, John... I think you studied the topic more than any of us. How would you describe peaceful parenting as a as a general parenting style versus other uh, yeah. more traditional styles of parenting? Uh, to me, it's uh, trying to it's a different way of communicating with your children to try to get them to uh, understand their feelings and um, communicate them, uh, expand their their um, their vocabulary relative to emotions and uh, just with the end state of hopefully uh, raising peaceful children children who in the future uh, are have hopefully no inclination to to force other people to to do what they want them to do but, uh, she basically just let her run wild and do whatever she wants. <laughs> no, it's a lot more, a lot more, a lot more talking. It's not easier, that's for sure, and it's not always uh, peachy king. But um, you just try to keep the the long goal and 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 work through difficult times with 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 conversation. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, it's challenging. It's not easy. It's not the easier way for sure. I mean, I was. Definitely raised in a conventional, uh, you could say, punitive style, um, southern upbringing, and uh, doubled down, going and spending a life in the in the Marine Corps, and so I certainly didn't learn that stuff from my childhood or from my military experience. It was uh, after the fact, and uh, started um, realizing that uh, there was another way, and uh, just trying to started digging into that and started putting it into into uh, into effect as much as possible 
So, it it's basically a, a completely different way of looking at parenting, right? I would say yes, definitely. Um, yeah, I have a. There's a good book I read recently. Uh, no, not recently, actually. It's uh, when she was quite a bit younger. It was uh, Building Emotional Intel- Intelligence by Michelle Bort, I think it was. And as an example, it has a, m- a bunch of vocabulary words just relative to specific um, uh, principles, kindness, compassion, empathy. And uh, we used to do exercises watching uh, soap operas on mute, and we'd I'd pick one of the words and then just have her explain to me what she thought, what emotions they were talking as an example. So uh, it, it's, that's one thing we done is, have done that's to just try to build a, a bigger emotional vocabulary so that when we have hard times, she can communicate uh, what's really bothering her. Yeah. What would you say to somebody who said, well, isn't that uh, it, so much a fo- uh, focus on emotion? Doesn't that make them kind of soft, so to speak? Uh, that's an interesting point, but um, yeah, I, I think one could make that I argument. Mean, we're, all, we're all from right. right. I, I think we're all from authoritarian type. Right, and I could see someone making that argument. I mean. From my family, I think it's what's more uh, more a front is seeing this dialogue go down <laughs> with a child that's you know borderline you know having a, having a issue maybe not responding uh, you know uh, uh, demonstrating instant obedience to to demands and having a conversation about it. I know that would be uh, that's that's what would be. Uh, most difficult for like my family looking in on like well, you know <laughs> this is crazy what's going on you know <laughs> I yeah. think the main thing is that you're no longer using you're no longer claiming authority to tell them what to do it's more rationalizing what exactly you want them to do right yeah, yeah. and uh, Alfie Cohen's another good source uh, unconditional parenting and there's different extremes of it sure uh, I definitely know people who uh, who there's, they're very, very liberal with it, you know, and, and, and uh, maybe more successful at that extreme than some others. But uh, that's, that's the general premise, yeah, it's trying to get everything down to, um, you know, getting them to do things voluntarily instead of forcing them to do things. And so that they'll grow up, <coughs> excuse me, with, uh, you know, a, a general voluntarist philosophy through life hopefully yeah Marshall Rosenberg is another good yeah reference um, I think <clears throat> he's often said uh, when it comes to parenting you want to ask yourself two questions number one what do you want them to do uh, and this one's easily answered by both schools of thought or most schools of thought really on on the matter uh, but the other question you want to ask is why why what do you want their motives to be and I think that's where it really uh, come comes into play the the idea of peaceful parenting well said yeah because you don't uh, with with an authoritarian uh, or disciplinarian view, the motive is often to not get in trouble. Right, right. Basically. And it teaches them that might is right, essentially, or... You know. To obey a claimed yeah. authority sure. right, right. without any proof of uh, any knowledge of what they're discussing. Yeah, and that, that's written on one, on our board in there. As a matter of fact, rationality is a virtue, which I'm pretty sure comes from Ayn Rand. It's an objectivist uh, yeah. principle. But yeah, so she's been getting that for a long time, and... Uh, she calls me out quite frequently. <laughs> That's know? good. Yeah, She's yeah. thinking. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Like, I may say something, maybe out of frustration, but she's like, what does that have to do with X? You know what <laughs> I mean? That's so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, at seven years old. That's but, awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, 
My understanding is that the reason emotions are so important is because if you understand the language of emotions, you can better communicate your needs, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, most of our tantrums or our tantrums originate from something and oftentimes that's underneath the surface. We are, since we're not trained to, to speak with, with empathy or connect these tantrums, if I call them tantrums, to the actual need, oftentimes we're, people are arguing about something on the surface when the deeper issue we're not even talking about. And so that that's why we talk about the emotions and, and try to connect what our problems are, find the root of our problems so we can discuss the root, strike the root on the issue. Exactly. Um, That's really interesting. So you're doing the, um, you've done the, the, the soap thing with the volume off with your daughter? Yeah. And that's to develop empathy. Well, that's, yeah. So that she so can and I don't recall all the, all the principles, but uh, there's kindness, empathy, compassion, uh, did I say kindness? I did, didn't I? Um, and now it's a little bit rusty, but there's these, these I think it's 11 principles that she has in the book. Mm -hmm. And then you, you go through each principle, and there's like 40 or 50 vocabulary words just related to that principle. So that's essentially the kind of drills we were doing. And does she does she suggest that as an actual exercise? She does in the book, yeah. yeah. So it's not like that's I, really yeah. interesting. But yeah. also, what I've done with it with Cora is, and it's not, it's it has a different effect. But is watch subtitled movies. I like Asian movies, or Asian historical pieces, mm -hmm. Korean specifically, some Jap more Japanese and some Chinese. And uh, we'll watch the movies in subtitles, and I hope that that's reinforcing that. You know, m movies you have to read can be entertainment too, and uh, mm -hmm. there's also the historical element of that, and yeah, hmm. that's been kind of fun. And so, my take on how important the thing of empathy is is that I think that we live more and more in a society where I think sociopathy is is it's almost like a virus. And the fact that there's wars going on all over the place and people don't even pay attention to that. They, they can't even connect that there's, you know, Iraq, for example, millions of people, innocent people, dying, Afghanistan, what's going on in Israel, what's been going on with the Palestinians forever. Nobody connects to that, that these are real people. Families torn apart, injured for life, dying, mm -hmm. and because there's that that lack of moral equivalent uh, moral equivalence uh, in all those things that you know normally we're taught you know you don't hit you don't steal but then when we be become adults because we've been raised in an authoritarian way we grow up to expect something outside of ourselves should boss us around and that those things that we don't do and we don't even think are right to do and we would certainly question with family members, friends, we would disassociate with people that did steal and murder. But there's that, I don't know, it's like a cognitive dissonance. But anyway, my point is I think that whole thing of empathy, really focusing on that and helping to develop that in a child is absolutely key to creating a better future so that they will do the same with their kids. And yeah, I agree. And, and I would add for anyone who's going down this road or thinking about this road in the future, from someone who wasn't raised this way, and like I mentioned, uh, spent time in the military, so it's just to help reinforce the punitive, back, my own punitive upbringing. Uh, it's not like... Uh, anybody's perfect or there's a perfect way to execute it but uh, my attitude has been if I can be successful at least in even with dealing with adults using nonviolent communication compassionate communication whatever you want to call it you know at the 40 percentile and reduce conflict in my life uh, by that much as a modest goal I think 
and uh, the same with in parenting that hopefully uh, the next generation Cora can be much more successful employing that you know closer to um, near universal and as it grows and spreads and more and more people are doing it uh, then even if best case scenario we only reached 80 percent at the individual level when you encounter other people who are doing it at 80 percent then the odds are you bump into them when they're exercising it and uh, so it's never going to be perfect but the point is that it could become so you know socially yeah. socially social evolution to the point where uh, conflict is greatly mitigated because people have learned how to speak with empathy you know, uh, connected to Right. Yeah, you know, connected uh, communication form. Right, just like slavery at one time was was norm, accepted, right. and now nobody would think, except for some insane person, would think that slavery yeah. is cool. And so, ultimately, well, long after I'm gone, chattel slavery. Yeah, overt chattel slavery. Exactly. Yeah, it yeah. it still goes on, and yeah, but not, well, yeah, not, overt yeah, slavery. But right. The, yeah. Okay, well, well, that's all. That's a whole topic. Right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. I think, I think something that really plays into this too, and you kind of brought it up, is is our language. Um, Marshall Rosenberg kind of delineates it into two different ones: uh, jackal, which is kind right. of talking at people, right, uh, and giraffe, which is trying to understand people. And the and giraffe comes from the big heart. The heart right. Yeah, the, yeah. the animal has the biggest heart of yeah. Does it really? any yeah. mammal. Oh, I didn't know that. That's how he came up with giraffe, yeah. Mm. So that's why, uh, actually, maybe you've heard me crack a joke about em embrace your inner giraffe. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think I have, actually. Yeah. But yeah, the language is, is very important. Uh, how you talk to people can... How you say something can... <clears throat> can easily uh, completely change how somebody else perceives what you said. Right. Absolutely. I, I think that's another thing about the whole peaceful parenting <clears throat> thing is you want to treat the children as anybody else. You, you, wanna, you want them to become accustomed to this is how humans treat each other. You don't want right. to treat them like they're inferior or... Like, they must obey you because you're an authority figure. You're showing, hey, we work together because it makes sense for right. both of us. Right. And see... And in, in, in cases <laughs> where they should listen to you, it's because you know more. You, you, or you're, you're more wise because you're older, you've experienced more. Not because and you're in charge and you're the authority. Yeah. Not only that you right. know more... That's important. But that you can <clears throat> communicate it well to them. That, I think that's that a very a, important point. Which yeah. means that you have to be, as a parent, you have to be adult enough to come to your kids, yeah. like John was talking about a little bit ago, and admit that you fucked up. Well, you don't say that to them. <laughs> <laughs> but you screwed I've up. I've done that you many times. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I I've used to do that with my kids. Yeah. And, and the payoff to me, and I was not, I did not understand, I didn't know about the concept of peaceful parenting when my kids were little, but I figure we were probably about 85% there. The cool thing about it, the payoff is that my kids now come to me and when, they, when they've when they got some real serious issue going on, like even emotional, they'll talk to me about it, which I really appreciate, you know, because I sure as hell couldn't do that with my father. Right. There's no way, yeah. you know. Um, Unapproachable in that yeah, I don't think I heard like a, an apology. I was wrong, and not that I'm harboring feelings, but I don't think I heard that from my parents. Like, save the time, like I uh, had bruises from Big Brown, you know, the big belt, you know what I mean. Mm. And I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I know my, I know I got it then, an apology and that, but I don't think I heard that once or twice in my entire childhood. And well, I know I've wore that out you. already with my daughter. <laughs> that's two more than I got. Yeah, my son, yeah. So. And uh, in Alfie Cohen's book, he's got he's got a point in there. He says, I think that parents should apologize for something at least twice a month to their kids. Yeah. Why twice a month? That's pretty. That's a good round number, and it's arbitrary, but at least I'm admitting it. 
I think that's good because it's it's humbling yourself in front of me, and that that is part of the 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 ingredient, if you want, know, whatever the term would be, in that they see you as more of an equal, as a human, as a human instead and of the authority figure, because you're not shoving this stuff down their throat, and they're terrified to question you. They won't be. Um, and you're you're showing them it's it's good to admit when you're wrong. Yes, that's a good oh, that's lesson huge. in itself. That's freaking huge. People. Yeah, <laughs> and I can <laughs> I can really, yeah. I can say as well that uh, my son was you know, thirteen and a half, fourteen before I started reading this. So we were going into the teenage years with a lot of conflict, and uh, uh, it definitely. Uh, turned it around and, and and I think that aside all that from aside I think a good message was sent by to my son then that he could see that adults could will you know anybody can change you know anybody can do it at any time so whenever we're frustrated and uh, have a down look at uh, at what's going on in the world around us uh, anybody can change at any time and that's a, a powerful uh, antidote for anybody mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah, I can definitely say that it it helped to reduce conflict and improve my relationship with my son. So that took it on later. I was I was parenting him early on, just like I was parented. Sure. And uh, yeah, yeah. And well, that's pretty good that you were able to pull pull it off at thirteen, because normally by thirteen, <laughs> you know, I mean he seems like a pretty centered kid. Right. You know. Yeah. And so. I think that probably had a lot to do with it, like you're saying, is, is coming to him and saying, okay, I think I did some stuff wrong in the past, and I'm sorry about that, you know. But I think that's also part of the thing of empathy, because as an adult, when you recognize you screwed up and you apologize to the kid, a sincere, genuine apology, instead of, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, no, that's not an apology, that's BS. They, that's also that thing of empathy because you've recognized in them that you may have hurt them. And then they, them seeing that you are being empathetic, you know, it's just, it's kind of a good, it's a good, good thing. <clears throat> and you know, one of the things that comes up a lot, I, I hear in parenting is <laughs> when children make mistakes is say you're sorry, you know, mm-hmm. but, it, yeah. but when the child apologizes under those kind of circumstances, are it's, they really sorry? Like no. That. They're no. just not wanting to get hit or something, yeah. you know? You can't put a club over their head and say, say it's fine. Right. Yeah, when you communicate to them, and, uh, when they're not a- acting in a way we would prefer them to act, you know, uh, at least in my case, you just try to attach how would someone else feel when they're mm-hmm. acting this way. You know, we ta- always try to attach it to feelings. So mm-hmm. there, so without, there are repercussions right. to, yeah. Without, without, without doing, being, doing guilt. Right, right. Like a lot of parents. Oh, right. uh, yeah. My mom, <laughs> big time guilt. Yeah. Guilt! Yeah. And, uh, and it's difficult, I'm telling you. I'm not here to tell you it's easy, for sure. But, uh, no. I think, uh, you know, it, the long, the long, in the long view, it's definitely the better way, I believe, for sure. So I, I think the main I thing is... <laughs> having the children understand why humans are doing what they're doing, including their parents, like what it is that uh, causes humans to do what they do. And right. and getting them adjusted to knowing what that is, because the easier you can understand people, the more easy it is to interact with them and deal with them and trade with them and do anything. And you won't have issues come up if you understand what makes people tick. Right. Uh, and if you understand why people are doing things, you can also see, hey, they're doing it for this reason. It's not to hurt me or you know, anything that's personally attacked against me. It's because of this. This is why they're doing it. So right. uh, it's, it's good to allow children to figure out what that is, what makes people tick. Right. And yeah. I, I think the, the, the word I should have used when I was describing that was negotiation. You're always negotiating. Yeah, that's no, exactly. Really that's a powerful down. point. Okay. Right. So, yeah, it, it's a, I'm going to have to run away with it. 
You want to add more? No, no. I, well, I mean, negotiation is rational, whereas right. the other is the, the club over the head type of threat is irrational and, and is, doesn't get good results, and it's just uncool. But go ahead. Yeah, most parents and kids don't, oh, <coughs> parents don't really have it, didn't negotiate with their parents. So they don't re really teach their children how to negotiate. So there's no, when do people learn how to negotiate? That's, everything's pre preferable mm -hmm. uh, to be done voluntary. And the only way you really get there is by honing your negotiation skills. So with, yeah, with Cora as an example, I, I, I negotiate frequently. I even try to get her, sometimes she'll forget and uh, I'll be like, hey, let's negotiate you know just remember you know because you know I, I might say no but come back with something you know just to help prime her to always be negotiating and so hopefully you know when she's 22 or whatever and she's going for that job and so and so says this is your salary she just doesn't sheepishly put her head down and say okay and you want her to be strong enough and secure enough and have the negotiation skills to say no you know I'll do this job for X you know and uh, I want her to Right. To, we all should be strong enough to to right. to be able to know when we can negotiate for something better than. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's an important point. Thanks for bringing mm -hmm. that up. Yeah. And the longer you practice something like that, the better you're going to get at Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So if you're starting it earlier, and you're getting these skills at an earlier point, then it's going to give you a a better position in the long run. Yeah, and I, I just want to add something real quick. Um, when we talk about punitive type child rearing we're not talking purely spanking we're talking spankings timeouts positive reinforcements right, all yeah. of those are encompassed in manipulation yeah all, all of it is encompassed in the punitive what do you mean by positive reinforcement uh, if you do this then i'll then you can have cookies after dinner or, okay uh, bribes yeah yeah right <laughs> i mean cuz essentially there's not, nothing different from that from uh, from negative reinforcement, mm -hmm. if you take the positive as a given. I think one has another one, punished by rewards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's very. Yeah, that's no, a good that's, book. That's really uh, that that that's really like almost schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, and uh, when when you talk about uh, negotiation, you're not. Uh, I'm sure you're not talking about. Uh, well. You can't go to this blood and gore movie, but maybe we can let you have a little bit more computer time as as payment type of thing, either, right? No, I, uh, more of a reasoning thing. Yeah, yeah. More of like back and forth, why this shouldn't shouldn't happen. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to yeah, uh, right. clear that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, we're out of time. Yes. Um, maybe we can pick the subject up another time. Sounds good. Um. We didn't get to robot sex again. Makes oh, sense. <laughs> Makes sense this week. <laughs> For the first time. Maybe next week, though. Anyway, Cheers. have a good, good one. Night. <laughs>